What's going on? June with the Sushi Man, and in this video, we're doing something a bit different than usual. I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite Japanese whiskeys and break down each one in a very simple way so that hopefully it can help you make a better purchasing decision or just get you into the world of Japanese whiskey in general. All right, now let's jump right in. So obviously I'm a big fan of Japanese whiskey. Actually, I'm a big fan of whiskey in general, especially scotch. And that's why Japanese whiskeys are right up my alley because there's a historical connection between Japanese whiskey and scotch. Masataka Taketsuru, who is known as the father of Japanese whiskey, studied how to make scotch while he lived in Scotland way back in the early 1900s. He then brought his knowledge back to Japan and partnered with Shinjiro Tori, who was the founder of Santori. This marked the beginning of the Japanese whiskey industry. And then about a decade later, Taketsuru left Santori and started his own distillery, which became Nikka. And if you know or heard anything about Japanese whiskeys, you had to have heard both names, Santori and Nikka. They're the two most reputable Japanese distilleries by far. Now, over the years, Japanese whiskey has gained international acclaim for its exceptional quality, craftsmanship, and meticulous attention to details, constantly winning awards. But with popularity comes fakes, unfortunately, meaning there are tons of so-called Japanese whiskeys that are not distilled in Japan, and it gets pretty complicated when you get into the regulations and classifications. So to keep this list simple and true to Japanese whiskey, all the bottles I have here are either from Santori or Nikka. But don't worry, there are plenty of options to choose from. Now that said, both Santori and Nikka own distillers around the world, which is utilized in their blended whiskey sometimes. So some of these bottles technically don't meet the pure Japanese whiskey criteria. But anyhow, both companies are very solid and sit at the pinnacle when it comes to quality Japanese whiskeys. And quite honestly, these two are the only ones I like to drink on a regular basis. But I'm always open to try something new. So let me know in the comments below if there's a Japanese whiskey that you highly recommend. All right, now let's get into our list. So I'll be breaking this list down into three parts by price point, starting with the low end and moving on towards the higher end. Let's begin with this bottle of Santori Toki. You've probably seen this at your local liquor stores, restaurants, bars. I mean, it's a very popular and highly distributed bottle from Santori. It's a blended whiskey and their most affordable one at about 30 to 40 US dollars. The taste is light and refreshing with hints of citrus, honey, and vanilla. Not one that I typically would drink on its own, but great for cocktails such as Japanese highballs or whiskey sour. Nothing to really write home about, but overall a well-balanced whiskey and a great starter bottle, especially at such a low price point. Okay, this next one is also from Santori, and this one's a very unique and cool one. It's called Ao, and it's actually not a pure Japanese whiskey, but rather a blend from five of the world's most renowned whiskey making regions, which are Scotland, Ireland, Canada, United States, and Japan. The name Ao means blue and represents the oceans that connect the different countries. Pretty cool, right? Taste wise, it's pretty mild with some fruity sweetness to it. A slight touch of smoke, caramel, overall a pleasant whiskey that doesn't break the bank. At around 55 bucks, it's a great choice and I find myself drinking it pretty often. Plus the bottle looks really nice so it can be a great gift as well. All right, the last one in the low tier price point is the Nikka Days, which I don't have a bottle of anymore, but I'll put in a picture right here. It's the entry level blended whiskey from Nikka and is another very good beginner bottle. Price point is usually around $50, which is very good for what you get. It's a light, easy sipping whiskey that's actually a lot more complex than it looks. Think fresh fruit aromas, smooth, slightly sweet, and a light finish that makes it super easy to keep drinking. And just like the name implies, it's a perfect one to sip on all throughout the day. Outside, when it's nice and sunny, either neat, on the rocks, or in a refreshing cocktail. It's a good versatile one from Nikka, especially at the price. All right, moving on to our mid-tier. The first one in this price point is from Nikka again, and it's called From the Barrel. And this is another one that I'm out of. Need to go restock it actually because I really enjoyed this one. It's called From the Barrel because it was developed with an aim to deliver full flavors and richness, as if tasting from the barrel. It's blended with more than 100 different batches of malt and grain whiskeys, and then matured for another few months inside used barrels, which results in an extremely smooth and well-balanced whiskey. It's definitely a step up from the previous three that we went through, and you can taste its complexity. It has a higher ABV for a Japanese whiskey at 51.4%, but doesn't really taste like it. At around 70 to 80 bucks, it's right around the middle ground for Japanese bottles, and it's a really solid choice. It's a mellow, easy sipping whiskey that I wouldn't mind drinking anytime. All right, moving on to our next bottle, which is again from Nikka. 
This one is called Nikka Coffee Grain. Now, don't be fooled by the name. This has nothing to do with the coffee you drink in the morning, and it is spelled correctly. Coffee is actually the name of the still used to distill the whiskey. I know, kind of confusing. And there's actually two types of these, this coffee grain, and also this coffee malt version. Both are good in their own ways, but I personally prefer the grain over the malt. So this malt one didn't make the list this time, maybe in another video. So the grain is primarily made from corn, which makes it a great introductory Japanese whiskey for any bourbon drinkers. It's mellow, sweet, and has hints of vanilla, caramel, and toffee. I personally prefer drinking it neat, but it's great with an ice cube as well. Again, it's right around that $70 to $80 price range, which is pretty typical for this level of Japanese whiskey. Now, we can't talk about Japanese whiskey without mentioning Hibiki, and the one that is in this mid-tier price point is the Hibiki Harmony, which I thought I had a bottle, but I must drink it all. But it looks exactly like this Hibiki 17 that I got here, just with a different label. And it's a really pretty bottle too. And it's called Harmony because that's what it is. A harmonious blend of the finest select whiskeys from the house of Suntory. It's ultra smooth, mellow, light but has enough depth to it where it makes you come back for more and more. A lot of times too much, hence the bottle's gone. The one downside though is the price. I remember I could find a bottle for around 50 bucks back in the days, but now you're probably looking more around 90 to 100. But then again, everything has gone up in price, and this bottle is still well worth it. Alright, let's move on to our last tier, the high price point. Starting off the high-end group is the Yamazaki 12 year from Suntory. This is Suntory's flagship single malt whiskey. I mean, need I say more? It's a single malt which means it's produced at a single distillery, obviously at Yamazaki Distillery, and it uses 100% malted barley. It's won countless awards and rightfully so. It's smooth and complex, yet delicate with some sweetness of fruits and hints of honey and vanilla. Now, is it overhyped? Maybe, but it makes you realize how beautiful Japanese whiskey can be. And I'm sure many people got hooked on Japanese whiskey because of this particular bottle. The only negative really is the price, which isn't going down anytime soon. At around $180 to $200, it's not that easy to just buy a bottle and try. And at that price point, you start to think, well, I can buy two of these or maybe even three of these other bottles. But regardless, this is a great bottle with exceptional quality. Perfect for a special gift. Maybe to your favorite content creator? Hint, hint. All right, next up in this group is another single malt Suntory whiskey, the Hakushu 12 year. This is a very unique one that's a lot different than its Yamazaki counterpart, but different in a good way. The Hakushu distillery is known as a forest distillery because it's tucked in the mountains with beautiful natural surroundings. And because of that, it has many herbal notes with also hints of green apple. Now, it is a peatier whiskey, meaning it's smoky, especially compared to other Japanese whiskeys. Not anything near something like Lafroig or Ardbeg, but you will taste that smokiness. But it's not overpowering. It's apparent but gentle enough to balance out the sweetness, which personally, I love. My wife, on the other hand, is not a big fan. But hey, that means more for me, right? The only thing, again, with these highly sought out bottles is the price. At around 200 bucks, is it really worth it? Well, that's up to you to decide. For me, I think it's delicious. Not something I drink all the time, but on special occasions, hell yeah. All right, and we've come to the last bottle, and I saved my all-time favorite whiskey for last. This is the Hibiki 21 year, and is arguably the best blended whiskey on this planet, and it's won awards year after year to prove it. This particular one is a Mount Fuji limited edition bottle, which I was lucky enough to find at the duty free in Narita airport years ago. Now, the first time I got to try Hibiki 21 was at the Yamazaki Santori distillery itself. They had an amazing tasting where we got to try all different types of Santori whiskey, including the Hibiki 30 year. I was literally a kid in a candy store, but then I realized that they didn't sell any of these bottles, which I was pretty bummed out about for a while. But anyways, the 21 year was a unanimous winner. Blended from whiskeys matured for at least 21 years in bourbon, sherry, and Mizunara casks, this thing is aged to perfection. There's so much depth to it with each sip becoming more and more complex. It's a bottle so good that it makes you not want to open it, if that makes sense. And the price just keeps going up. Right now, if you can find one, it'll be anywhere between 1000 upwards to 1500 Now, if that's in your price range and you're looking for a bottle, make sure to do your due diligence because there are fakes out there. And if you don't want to dish out four figures for an entire bottle, then find a restaurant or bar that carries it. Or better yet, hit up the Santori Distillery in Japan. Alright, that is my top 9 Japanese whiskeys. Now, I really had to narrow it down to these 9 because there are a bunch more that I really like. 
The Hibiki 17, for example, is a phenomenal whiskey. However, at the average current price of around $1,000, you're better off spending a bit more to get the 21. Now, I can give you recommendations left and right, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. So what I enjoy might be totally different than what you like. But I hope that this video helps you learn more about Japanese whiskey, particularly these bottles, and at least gets you curious enough to start drinking Japanese whiskey. So whether you like bourbon, scotch, Irish, or Canadian, venture out and try some of these. And most importantly, have fun while you do it, because that's what it's all about, right? And of course, always drink responsibly. All right, thanks for watching. And now that you know much more about Japanese whiskey, go watch this video right over here to learn all about Japanese sake. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments and definitely let me know if there's a bottle that you highly recommend. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one. Come fight. Damn, that's good.